Welcome to the Best Things Podcast. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget to follow us on all the socials at Best Things Pod as well. Now, here are your hosts, Craig and Aaron. Hello, Internet. Welcome into the Best Things Podcast. For us, again, <laughs> I'm Craig. He's Aaron, again. <laughs> Craig and Aaron. Uh, it's us. So we're going we're gonna to make sure this intro is better than the one that you guys never heard. <laughs> it's a lost episode. <laughs> it's a lost. Hang on. I got to, I got to, I can't hear myself. There we go. Now we can hear. Yeah, so a little inside baseball. We we started recording this, and for some reason, our camera about twenty seconds into it just stopped recording, and we didn't know it stopped recording until about. Three it was or- just a. It was a message from the universe that we needed to do yeah. it again. Yeah, we just we needed, needed to do better. We just needed to do better. So we're just going to ignore everything we already said because I have a feeling we'll be forced at this point. Yep, <laughs> like the Marvel episode we did that one time. <laughs> The whole thing. We were going the, the entire episode. The whole it was good episode. too. Like I felt good about it. I was like, "This is gonna, this is gonna go viral. Like this is gonna get the views." <laughs> Just lost to history. We don't have it anywhere. That's before we were doing video too. So like it was just audio. Just, yeah. Just gone. <laughs> Uh, we thought about should we record it again right now and we're like well no it's just gonna feel weird like we're gonna there's no yeah there's no way to put your heart into there's that just the not, second time yeah. you spent it a natural <laughs> none of it an hour and a half recording an episode just for to try to remember all that now so we're just gonna move on uh i will say though it is february so happy happy uh according to aaron one of the top bottom months in, yeah. of the year but we are uh Today we are. We didn't go into this day thinking this would be an episode we were going to do. No, this kind of just came about. Yeah, uh, but we got a good one for you today. We're going to talk about directors, movie directors. Now, we have said here on the podcast before, we are not necessarily your film snobs. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. We're we're more of your average guy, movie reviewers, or just we just enjoy yeah. movies. Just. Your average snobs, yeah, yeah, not your just av- film snobs. <laughs> your average ones. Uh, so today we're going to talk about directors, and so our tastes may lean uh, a little bit more in the average person direction. Like, and let's be honest, we probably are talking to average people. That's a good point. Yeah, I don't know if we really have a lot of above average listeners. That's true, and but but. I, I guess I'm saying that for those people who may be just seeing the title and just happen to come across us yeah. on the internet, and you're like, oh, these guys are going to review the best directors of all time, and they're going to have my tastes. Probably not. <laughs> it's also good for those that might find clips on like TikTok. Yeah. When they just see it, they're going to be like, oh, the, these people left out, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Right. We, we know. We already know up front. <laughs> we know. <laughs> and we don't care. <laughs> this is not exhaustive. Yeah. Uh, this is not researched this is not thought out no this is just you know think about the least amount of of our pants the least amount of research you could do we have done that we've done that hit record and said let's do it (laughs) a second time so we're going to talk about uh the best directors and i love the idea that you had at the end we, we like to bracket some everything at the end of every episode and instead of just picking all these these just the directors themselves we're picking one movie from each director and that will be their champion yes to go head to head up against a different director so at the end of the day yes you're talking about the director but you're also talking about that specific movie and so you're talking so at the end of the day we're going to crown which is the best directed movie by the best director does that make sense i know from the slight amount of research that we have done there will probably because I noticed some of your reactions as we threw out some different names. I'm like, okay, I got to think of who that is and look at like, well, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen mm-hmm. that. Uh, so there may be several of these that you throw out. I may have to build a list of right. movies from. Yeah, uh, and maybe that's how you are. If you haven't seen some of these, you may want to build a list and say, okay, I should check out some of what these individuals have done. And what's funny too, you know, there are so many good directors out there. There's also, you know, I think what I like about the way we're doing the bracket at the end, there are some, I don't want to call them one hit wonder directors, but they may have done a lot of indie movies and then they popped off and did one blockbuster. 
right. that you love. So I think this is a, I mean, when it comes to us figuring out the best eight, we're probably going to lean toward ones that, you know, have, have a big repertoire, but, um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see, uh, how it gets, you know, there's also a lot of actors who are also direct some things from time to time. And so we, we're also probably going to miss a lot. There's probably going to be some we miss. Yeah. And we need to know to let us know which ones we missed. Um, before we get started, I was thinking about this uh, this morning when I realized we were recording. Um, do us a favor. If you're watching six minutes into this thing or listening six minutes into this, stop what you're doing right now and send a send this link to somebody. Text it to somebody and just say, hey, check out these idiots and what they have to say. It would help us out a lot. That, I mean, that's better than what I, th I thought you were saying. If you're still listening six minutes into this, stop. Because <laughs> it's downhill from here. <laughs> uh, you heard our best. <laughs> oh. uh, are you ready? Uh, oh, my gosh. I forgot a big one. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's insulting, though. That, that is insulting. I, I yes. think that's insulting. We're going to have to get into it. I, I, I was just thinking, I was like, maybe I need to look a little further down. And yeah, sure enough. Okay, sorry. We're having our own conversation. Are you ready to dive into this thing? Like a polar ice cap dive <laughs> with a bear. Before we can figure out the best thing, we have to talk about all the things. It's time for The Thing About The Things. Okay, we are talking movie directors. And... Uh, we don't have, I have a ranker art, article here. Uh, we've said this for the last hundred plus episodes. Like we, we are not sponsored by anchor. We have no affiliation to them, but ranker. I do, I do think they, what did I say? Anchor. anchor. <laughs> We're not sponsored by anchor either, but I mean, they're welcome to sponsor us too. Uh, but <clears throat> I will say that I do think ranker does a great job of being the voice for the people. You know, yeah. it's it's not necessarily critics or anything like that. It is just a bunch of uh, people votes. like us. Yeah. So, um, Aaron, why don't you lead us off and give us one that we can start out with here? Okay. Then I'm gonna hit the uh, the button and go ahead and take a guy. Should should we remind people what the button does? Yeah. With? This is the the Taco Bell bell, and at any point we can hit this button. And add a director mm -hmm. to the bracket. And their movie. And their movie. We have to attach a movie to A it. movie along with the director. Yeah. We're saying these are one of the, oh man, one of the best eight directors. Yes. And their movie. And their movie. So you're talking like the, this is, Ooh. you can't say this is the best movies of all time. But this is the best movie director combo of all time. Yep, it is, and that adds uh, that that adds an element it to does. it. Does yeah, because now I got to rethink. <laughs> because I want to take Alfred Hitchcock. Okay. In the beginning, I'm going to go kind of old here and starting out. You may have noticed we have a fancy little screen right here. Oh yeah, and so we're gonna well, we're, we get to throw some stuff up on the screen if I, we have prepared ahead of time. <laughs> I can't figure out which way to put <laughs> that guy. You there he is. Peeking his nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, we're going to have fun. With I wish it was one of those tele, you know, where you could yeah, draw on it. Yeah, yeah, it's uh -huh. not that. It's just a TV. It's a, yeah. We're not that fancy. We're not, no. <laughs> if enough of you subscribe, That's share, right. and watch, we can get one of those. Yeah. Uh, for the for the studio, where do you want Hitchcock? Um, oh, that's a tough one. That's and a, what movie? That, that that's the part that I'm struggling with. You got so many with with Hitchcock. Interestingly, before I get to any of that, I I was going to tell you that according to an IMDb article ranking the top 25 greatest directors of all time, the ultimate list, they rank Alfred Hitchcock number three. Really. But what is interesting is that Hitchcock never won an Oscar. Did he not? He never won an Oscar. He had five nominations. Um, when you think of a suspenseful movie, 
a, a, a thriller, creepy that, that drama, suspense, horror like, genre. This is who you think of. He's one of the the greatest of all time. Yeah. So never won the Oscar. Was was were those not categories when, whenever he was around? He was nominated five times for Psycho, Rear Window, Spellbound, Lifeboat, and Rebecca. But his own words were, "I was always a bridesmaid, never a bride." Wow. Finally, in nineteen uh, yeah nineteen sixty seven, he received an honorary lifetime achievement Oscar. Okay. And he gave one of the shortest acceptance speeches in the history of the ceremony. By saying thank you very much indeed. That that is classic that, that's, Hitchcock, that's Hitchcock, right? That is classic. He is, I mean, famously, you know, was it the is it was it the beginning or ending of a lot of his movies? You had his profile, you know. It, it, yeah, at the beginning of the show, Alfred Hitchcock, Alfred Hitchcock presents the mm -hmm. Alfred Hitchcock Hour. You would see that profile of a show, and then he would step into it. Yeah. And always had this sort of this little quirky Iconic, monologue. Yes. It is. And his voice, very yes. specific voice. Yes. So when you hear thank you very you can picture him saying yes. it. You can hear it. Yes. He did movies like The Birds. Yes. Psycho. Yes. North by Northwest. Vertigo. The Man Who Knew Too Much. Rear Window. To Catch a Thief. Uh I'm Vertigo. Sure, Vertigo. I'm sure I have left some out. Movies like Rebecca and Life Both that he it's spellbound. He was did you say North by Northwest? Yes. A dial M for murder. These are some of the all-time classic yes. films. Yeah. And I think that it's a good place, as you were saying, that, that you would like to go back and, and yeah. re-watch. You know, and and as I, an adult now who appreciates this genre more, who has the attention span, I would love to go back and just have a Hitchcock movie marathon or uh -huh. just spend, you know, uh, and just, just take the time to actually watch them. There are several times that we we subscribe to a streaming service called friendly yeah and it has a lot of the old classic tv channels uh that'll rerun shows so the alfred hitchcock hour and alfred hitchcock presents is on all the time so i record those and i don't know every couple of weeks we'll watch an episode yeah of one of his shows just because it's got that interesting almost sort of twilight zoney i was about to ask that was he ever involved in twilight zone i don't, I don't know that he I don't was think he was but his shows definitely yeah and I think he was a forerunner to the Twilight Zone. I think he was probably a little right, before yeah. the Twilight Zone um, that hit the 60s. And I feel like Alfred Hitchcock Presents or the Alfred Hitchcock Hour was probably in the 50s. Yeah. But definitely, to me, he's worthy of being one of the all-time directors yeah. that goes on the bracket. The problem I'm having <laughs> is I mean, trying to decide which of those films... Can, can I... Yeah, I, I would say it's between Psycho or The Birds. And see that that's kind of where I was leaning between those two. Those seem like the two most iconic. Now I had I, I said before we, we hit record, like I have not seen the birds fully, but even I know uh, how important it is to the history of cinema. Let me uh, let me think here for just a second. We're going to allow him to think for just a second. Bear with. Yeah. I had his link here a second ago. This is what I was looking for. Let's take let, let's take Psycho. Okay. Let's take Psycho since he was nominated for an Oscar with that film. Okay. Where would you like it now? <laughs> Here's the next thing. Yeah. Figure <laughs> out where he belongs. I mean, you can move it around later if we need to. I think I want to put him at three. Uh, that's I, that's I think that's a good spot. But Cock and Psycho. Yeah. This guy, I feel like you start talking about him if you want to, if you know, you're going to go through a timeline. I'm sure there are earlier, there's some earlier directors as well. But in this genre, he's kind of one of the classics, I think. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Um, <laughs> I don't. I was looking at this list and I'm like, there, there's, there's an obvious person on here, but I don't want to. You don't want to go too obvious yet? I don't want to go... Or, or we get him out of the way. We've talked about him so much. I feel like... I don't know. It, it feels like we bring him up every couple of episodes. <laughs> but I'm going to go... I'm, you know what? We're going to go ahead and do it. Okay. We're going to go ahead and do it and get him out of the way. Uh, one Mr. Christopher Nolan. Okay. Everybody knows if you've listened to the pod for a while now, you know we're big fans of Chris Nolan. Uh, all his movies... 
Um, I mean, you go down the list. We, we did a whole episode dedicated to him. Uh, there's not probably many other directors we're going to do a whole episode on. We thought about doing one on Spielberg, and we, we still may at some point. But this, honestly, this episode kind of came from seeing yeah, yeah, Spielberg on the list. Looking at Spielberg. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll get to him probably. I'm sure we'll get to oh, yeah. him later. But, I mean, take your pick. I mean, it's similar – Similar to Hitchcock in, in a way where there's so many movies, and I think they're probably way more rewatchable for, for me just because they're newer and they're more interesting. Uh, and he's, again, we, we said this before, he's got decades more of film history on top of somebody like a Hitchcock where the, the industry rather had yeah. advanced. So Inception, Interstellar, The Dark Knight franchise, Tenet, Oppenheimer, Prestige. Dunkirk, Prestige, Memento, uh, Insomnia, uh, you know, you just, there's just so, so many Interstellar, uh, did I say Oppenheimer? Um, so, I mean, I, I think absolutely he's, he's going to be in this top eight. It's just a matter of where we want to put him right now. And what, while you're thinking of that, what you just mentioned a second ago, it would be interesting to know if you had somebody like Hitchcock today, if you, after all of yeah. the advancement yeah. in cinema, what would Alfred Hitchcock films be like today? You know, it would be interesting to it see would. that that kind of individual yeah. thrown into this. Yeah, I would I would look because I could absolutely see you know I don't know that he would be the big blockbuster kind of movies, do you? I don't know that he's gonna make these massive you know, worlds and stuff like that. I think he would still lean toward kind of an indie vibe almost. Exactly. And I would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. There's great directors who are doing that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put him at number two for right now. Okay. I, I could see him getting bumped up, but I'm going to put him at two right now. The problem is I don't know which movie which I want to put there. Movie. It's, it's, I think, between The Dark Knight, Interstellar, and Inception. I think those are the, the three. I would say... From I, this goes back to our episode from because I'm I'm trying to think of this through just the the lens of directing the movie right instead of just watching the movie okay uh, it's the first time on a bracket we've helped each other out it is <laughs> this yeah. is very collaborative while it wasn't my favorite film I feel like Dunkirk at least deserves some recognition. Mm for the style of movie that it was because it kind of stands out from anything else that exists i mean if you're gonna do that you got to put oppenheimer in there too his direction in oppenheimer yeah because there were so many cuts and and like trying to put in tenant like just the reverse nature of yes tenet. to me obviously the dark knight is amazing right but it feels like the direction of that movie Fairly self-explanatory. That, that, that's just how I... Yeah, the, the actress took it more mm -hmm. than, than the, his direction did. I, it, I agree with that. I, I think we can set that aside. You, you happy, Internet? We're, we're setting aside the Dark Knight for <laughs> once. <laughs> we're just going to... I saw somebody on our TikTok. They said, best things podcast, always putting Dark Knight and Christopher <laughs> Nolan ahead of everything. <laughs> you, you happy? We're putting it to the side for a minute, okay? We, we, we concede. And then Inception... Again, incredible movie, amazing writing. Which we also need to recognize. He he writes a lot of these. Yes. And so when we talk about Nolan as as a great film maker, all that stuff's included. Yeah. We're talking just directing though today. Let's see. Um Interstellar, I don't I, yeah, I don't know that there's a lot of direction. There there could yeah, I mean there could be. I mean, he's trying to pull out the emotions and the action sequences there. I don't know. I don't know which one. Maybe you could go the prestige. The prestige <laughs> may be the best of both worlds with that. I'm not mad at the prestige. No, I'm not either. Because he's he's you're you're having to conceal some things from the audience while also making obvious for when you rewatch it. I'm going to put the prestige. I think that is quintessential Nolan. And I think that, 
I think you see his directing chops in it. I'm happy with it. Yeah, I, I think that's fair enough. Okay. All right, what else we got? Oh, so many. And I've been thinking of some as we've been talking that aren't I haven't seen on any of these on, lists on yet. the lists. I I hate to do this. But I think I'm going to go ahead and take Steven Spielberg. Okay. While he's still available for me. I don't blame you at all. Because I, I do he's know more of Spielberg's works. There are some that I think you may be more familiar with than me. And so hopefully you may take some of those individuals and put them into the into the list. But IMDb ranks him number one. I don't know where Ranker had him. Ranker has him number six. Whoa. That's, it seems Whoa. very low. What? Hitchcock was five. Uh, Nolan was three. They've got Spielberg that low? Yeah. Okay. I think that that is... I think the people got that wrong. I, I agree. I think the people got that wrong. Big time. Um, let me see. We're, we're, as just as I started looking through the list of films directed by Spielberg, I think that I have seen more of Spielberg directed movies maybe than any other director. Yeah. I mean, he, to me... He is probably the director of the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. You know, he. I mean, think about any classic top-tier blockbuster movie from that. He he defined what a blockbuster was with Jaws. <laughs> like, the term blockbuster literally came because of Jaws. And so you you cannot think of a blockbuster without thinking of Steven Spielberg. And then you come out of out of Jaws into the early 80s with Raiders of the Lost Ark. Right, yeah. And you have the Indiana Jones trilogy. Mm -hmm. In between that, you have E.T., <laughs> which I have not seen. I cannot believe you have never seen E.T. I can't believe I haven't seen it either. Drew Barrymore, as a, as a kid, just I, a baby in that movie. I've always said, you e. know, I need to watch phone, phone home. home. Yeah. It's a it's a Halloween movie. Yeah. I always feel like I see people talk about Halloween. Yeah, because of the trick or treating and, and the Reese's pieces and, and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah, I, I get the Reese's pieces uh reference there. Uh, so I need to watch it. And the movies he's produced. I mean, you just you we're just talking about directing, but you know, he produced a lot of movies too. Then you you get to the nineties and he did a hook. Jurassic Park, Schindler's List, another Jurassic Park, and Saving Private Ryan in the 90s. Yeah. Those are five. Hit after hit after major. hit after hit. Like, he doesn't miss. And then he kicks off the 2000s with a movie called Artificial Intelligence, which I have not seen. Yeah, I think that that was with, not, not uh, yeah, it was with Robin Williams, wasn't it? I, I don't know. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I believe it was. I mean, I'm double checking to make sure. And then he hit this. No, it wasn't. That was with, um, I'm thinking Bicentennial Man. This was with Haley Joel Osment and Jude Law. Okay. Jude Law. Is he from Arkansas? Mm, no. No, he's British. <laughs> Jude Law wasn't the, uh, the wiener whistle guy in... No, that is Santa uh, Claus? Judge Reinhold. Oh, yeah. I was close. Jays. Yeah. <laughs> In the 2000s, he kind of went through this Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks era. Yeah, he worked really, with the Toms. Really <laughs> so you have Minority Report. Okay. Minority Report is one of my top 25 movies of all time. I love I, Minority yes, Report. I know that you do. Um, and we're starting to get. To minority report <laughs> Ooh, tech right now like the new apple vision vision pro like dude you are moving screens or it's just incredible but yeah minority report is is chef's kiss love it catch me if you can man another banger man you're tom hanks leo dicaprio uh i want to say uh, uh john voight is he no that's christopher walken christopher walken yep. and not john voight yep 
uh, the terminal, which I had not seen, but you said was also another very Tom, good movie. Again, Tom Hanks. He is uh, he is from a foreign country, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, on his flight to America, sometime between the the time he leaves and the time he lands in America, his country has basically fallen apart. And so his passport is no longer valid. That country doesn't exist anymore. So his passport's not valid. So Tom Hanks's character is stuck in a terminal until it can get resolved. So he lives there for months. I don't know, maybe over a year. Uh, so it, it's funny. It's kind of got a little rom com ish part to it. It's it's lighthearted, dramatic. It's it's great. If you like stuff like Catch Me If You Can, Forrest Gump, those kinds of things, you're gonna love the terminal. He then did a movie called Munich. Have you seen that one? Um, no. It I has seen Daniel that. Craig in it. Two, really? 2005. He okay. also did War of the Worlds in 2005 with he Tom did? Cruise. Yeah. It's, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago. It's hard to believe that was 20 years ago. It feels like it just came out. Then you had Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. That was probably a rare miss. <laughs> it just it wasn't a... I don't know what happened there. I don't blame the directing. <laughs> I blame the writing on that one. <laughs> Did he write it? I don't know. He may have. And if he did, Let's sorry. See, written by Steven Spielberg. Okay. Let's look at this yeah. and see. Uh, yeah, he wrote it. Okay. <laughs> Steven, rare uh, miss there, my friend. <laughs> um, What else did he have? Um, he, Lincoln. Oh, my gosh. Lincoln was fantastic. Incredible movie. That was, was that Daniel Day-Lewis's last film? Who was it? I know he retired shortly, shortly after, after that. that. Mm-hmm. And then you had Tom Hanks in Bridge of Spies. That was another great movie. Uh, BFG, which I know I've seen a lot about, but I've not watched it. You had The Post. The Post, which was also... Was that Tom Hanks? I was wanting to say it was. I think that's Tom Hanks as well. It's the... Um, is this the one... I can't remember if I've seen that or not. Yeah, Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks. Okay. I feel like I've seen it, but I don't remember it. Yeah, this is the a cover-up spanning four U.S. presidents pushes the country's first female newspaper publisher and her editor to join an unprecedented battle between press and the government. It was a, it was a good, very good movie. I like that one. Uh, uh, Ready, Ready Player One yeah. was a surprisingly good movie. And I, Phil, which it was 2018, so it's not that long ago. No. I went into, I put off watching it for a while because it doesn't, didn't seem super interesting. But then I think it was during COVID, Lauren and I were like, well, let's put it on. It's Steven Spielberg. It's got some good people in it. And we were pleasantly surprised. We loved that thing. It had a lot of nostalgia to it. It's sort of minority reportish. Yeah, isn't very it? much. Yeah. yeah, like it's it's VR. Yeah, I mean, it's VR. It's, you're in this game. Yeah, and it's it was very very entertaining. And then his next two films, I have not seen. I don't think you've seen either of those. No. I know a lot of people have talked about West Side Story. It's a musical, so it's not my jam. Right. And then the Fablemans, which is a movie about his life pretty much like it's, okay. it's kind of a biography of him it, it's how he described it's a story he always wanted to tell it was about his upbringing and all that kind of stuff and so uh, it's kind of from his perspective so i have not seen it i've heard it's fantastic i've heard it's very very good i just have not seen it yet what did i say where i was putting spielberg because of all the things we listed <laughs> you haven't said what movie yet though no number one you're putting him one number one the movie where where do we go with this? Let's collaborate again. I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, it's I think from a direction standpoint, I think you're talking it's going to be an older movie. Let me give you two that I'm I'm thinking, okay. I'm feeling toward the top. Number 1 Schindler's List. He produced it. Did he direct it? It's under directed okay. by Spielberg here. Okay. Um, Schindler's List definitely you talk about just uh, to be able to direct that movie and yep. to pull those emotions out. Yep, I feel like that one is worthy of a spot. I agree. Saving Private Ryan. That's the one I was going to mention. Um, out of all of them, that may be the one that I have watched more than any Spielberg movie. Um, maybe, I think maybe. I've seen Raiders a lot. I've seen Jurassic yes. Park a lot. Yes. Empire of the Sun is good, too. Um, I have not seen that one. Yeah, I I think as far as a director goes, I don't think you could go wrong with either one of those. Then let's put Saving Private Ryan on the board. Okay. 
I'm, I'm, I feel great with that. That's probably, it's probably the one I would pick. Okay. Wow. Coming out, this is going to be another one of those episodes where we, we don't have a lot of, I mean, there's going to be other ones that we need to mention. Honorable but, mentions. But it's yeah. going to be hard to not, not hit the top eight right off the, right off the bat. Um, okay. Let me see here who we got. Oh man. Um, I mean, I'm just going to go to ranker real quick and I don't know that either one of us is going to hit the button on it, but I'm just going to go ahead and get out of the way. Some of the, the, the ones that we, we have skipped so far, according to the ranker article, Martin Scorsese comes in at number one on ranker. And there's no doubt he is a fantastic director. Number two on IMDb. Um, but I have not always connected with a lot of his movies. He he is more of a um, what I what people listen. How many times have I done that recently? Where I just throw my pencil. <laughs> um, there are people on TikTok who agreed with me, who said they understood where I was coming from of the difference between a movie and a film, okay? And Scorsese does more does films, films than movies, okay? Um, he's done Wolf on Wall Street, Hugo, Goodfellas, uh, The Aviator, which was it was a good movie. It is a long um, and at times slow movie, but uh, it's good. Gangs of New York. Um, he, he really likes to work with Leonardo DiCaprio. He really does. <laughs> I, I can't remember if he did Shutter Island or not. Yes, did he? he? did. Shutter Island is really good. That is one I have not seen. Oh my gosh, it is. You gotta, you gotta add that to your list, man. That is, if I'm adding Scorsese, that's probably the one I'm doing. He did The Departed with yeah. DiCaprio, Damon Nicholson, and Wahlberg. Yeah. Um. So he's got a lot of great movies to his credit. The Irishman. That's the new one. Al Pacino, right? yeah. Robert De Niro. I think it was a Netflix original. Yeah. Taxi Driver, Raging Bull. Um, and then a brand new one, Killer to the Flower Moon, that's right. on Apple TV Plus. Yeah, I have not watched it yet. It's on my list. It is hard not to hit the button on him, but when it comes to like rewatchability movies and that kind of stuff, it's 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 also hard to add him to it. So I, I know we're going to get flack from people who are going to say, "How dare you not put Scorsese on the list?" I have not decided if I want to do it yet, though. <laughs> if you were going to, what movie do you think it would be? It's going to be either I really love Shutter Island. Like Shutter Island is a incredible movie. It's got big twists in it. It's it's suspenseful. Um it would probably be either Shutter Island or The Departed. The Departed was good. The Aviator is and Gangs of New York are both very very good also. Um The Aviator is probably more filmish, so it's got it's a big biopic or biopic, depending on how you like to say that. Um, so it's it's long, too. It's over three, maybe three and a half hours. Which one are you talking about? The Aviator. Okay, yeah. Um, that's about Howard Hughes. Um, Goodfellas doesn't make the... Uh... Goodfellas is kind of like The Godfather for me. Like it, okay. It's just really hard for me to get into. Yep. It's not my style of movie, Same. So, it's, so it's hard to connect with it. Same. Um, Did you watch The Irishman? I have not seen The Irishman. Again. I heard it was long also. It's very long... Very methodical, got that slow pace to it. Yeah. That it's just like I watched it and then I got to the end and it was just like it didn't do anything for yeah. me. Killers of the Flower Moon, I've heard, is very, very good. And that's what I do want to see. Multiple people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um And I like Wolf of Wall Street. Did I have not seen that yet. Um so it, it, it's gonna be Shutter Island or Departed. Would be, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him to the side. I don't know that I'm ready to pull the trigger. That you're on gonna him take him, but I'm gonna put. Oh man, he has. I'm gonna put the Departed. He has one Oscar. Been nominated twelve times. That's surprising to me, honestly. I'm really surprising. Surprised he has not won more. I forgot to mention this on Spielberg. He has three Oscars, fifteen nominations. Wow. Two BAFTAs, two Golden Globes, and and ranker people went sixth for Spielberg. For Spielberg, uh, yeah, sixth. And they have Scorsese where one. And again, this is it's all opinion. It's it's, it's all it's opinion. subjective. 
for sure. And so it's kind of w- what you like, but I mean, Scorsese's not really your family movie kind of guy. No. Spielberg, the whole family's watching Absolutely. these movies. Yeah. So, you know, but you know, like if people are into, you know, if they're into films, you know, if they're into to like that, if they, if they're not wanting to escape into a, a world, I mean, none of Scorsese's movies are going to take you to a new planet or a new creature. They're or, all very gritty. They're, they're real they're life gangs. And, yes. Yeah. Old old New York and, and Chicago yeah, mob. Like it's, it's time centric. Yeah. Instead of taking you to a new place. All right. Then your turn. Let's also go ahead and mention t- because this is one I don't think that I'm taking. Okay. But I feel like we would be remiss not to mention Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah. The Godfather yeah. series. Uh, let's see. What else has he done? He has done... The Cotton Club? I don't know it. Bram Stoker's Dracula? Not sure. Uh, Apocalypse Now. Okay. We, we, we know that one. Um, I don't. You don't know? The, you don't know Apocalypse Now? No. Okay. I'm looking through his list, and I don't think I know any of this. Hold up. I'm looking at the list, too. Do I see Jack on there? Jack. Francis Ford Fr- Coppola did Jack? That's Robin, <laughs> Robin Williams. Robin Williams, yeah. yes. Where wow. He's, he's he's a kid. You look at all of these movies that he did, That's what and I was Jack. Just, that caught my eye. Just, I was like, <laughs> hold on, Jack. <laughs> You've got the Godfather, and then Jack. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't know that. I like Jack. Jack was a good movie. That would be the one you would put up there. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to choose one, it's, I mean, uh, Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that, that one. It was like a fresh take on Dracula. Again, uh, seriously, this is just opinion. Like it's just his style, his movies, um, this just doesn't connect with everybody and it just hasn't connected with us as much. No, no doubt. He's a great director. Absolutely. Uh, IMDb has him number five. He has won five Oscars. Wow. 14 nominations. And we've we've said many times, like the Oscar, the Academy. Yeah. Tends th- to differ. They reward that. Wildly from the, from, the from, public. Yes. From our taste, we're typically out of sync with the Academy. Yeah. Uh, he's got four Golden Globes and 11 Globe nominations. Incredible career. Um, the... Ranker has him seven and called called him a titan of 1970s cinema. And I, I think that's Absolutely. a great way to describe it. Absolutely. So I feel good just giving him a, a mention here, a tip of the cap. Yeah. But I'm not putting him in the top eight for me. Uh, another one that I w- probably won't make the top eight. We, we'll just sprinkle these in. Uh, but I want to mention Ranker has him number nine. You, you probably aren't going to recognize his name. Uh, and we don't have a picture of him here. David Fincher. Um, right off the top of the bat, you're talking Fight Club. You're talking Seven, uh, The Social Network, Zodiac, um, Gone he, Girl, Gone Girl. So you're you're starting to get a picture of kind of his style, and he likes to work with Brad Pitt. Apparently, <laughs> that's interesting. Do you think that that's because the first movie where they work together, they just hit it off so much Chemistry. that they just want to go back? You see that a lot, though. Like, Christopher Nolan has his guys. Yes. Ron Howard has his guys. Steven Spielberg is pretty broad, but obviously he likes, like, Tom Hanks, and he's got his guys. Uh, so you see a lot of these directors lean towards certain actors very often. Um, Seven was fantastic. Seven is one of my top 25 movies. The ending of it. Oh, my gosh. Just, just gets me. Yeah. It, it's just, just <laughs> heartbreaking. It is, man. Just heartbreaking. It is so hard. Um, Fight Club was fantastic. Oh, oh I love Fight, Fight Club. Club. I've never seen it. Oh, man, it's good. I've uh, never seen it. Edward Norton. Uh, he did Benjamin Button. Again, Brad Pitt. Kind of a weird movie. Yeah. Wasn't one of my favorites. No. Interesting to watch. Yeah. Interesting absolutely. concept. Mm-hmm. You don't see that one all the time. Uh, Gone Girl, I really liked Gone Girl. Gone Girl was good. Liked it. I, I never saw a girl with a dragon tattoo. I... Don't think I finished it. I think I started it on a flight, and I never got to finish it. Social Network was good. Social Network was great. Yeah. Um, so just honorable mention here. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I don't think he's going to crack my top four um, or our top eight. But I, I felt remiss not to mention him. 
Oh, man. That was a lot of sounds. Yeah, there's a lot of sounds. <laughs> lot I'm, of sound. I'm struggling over here. <laughs> uh, I don't think I can do it yet. I'm going to see if you do it. <laughs> Let me... Uh, I'm going to take somebody different and and leave. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to pass. I'm going to let you go again. Oh, you're going to let yeah, me go. Yeah, I'm going to let again. you go again. Oh man. Okay, then I'm going to take Oh man. I don't know. See, you don't know either. I don't know either. Um I want to mention him later. Um oh, He's doing it. He's going. I think I want the Cohen brothers. Really? I think I do. Okay. I'd get on with that. Number four. Okay. You had No Country for Old Men. Great movie. Oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? Great. That's a top 25 movie. Yes. Absolutely. As far as rewatchable movies go. Oh, man. <laughs> I am a man of constant sorrow. sorrow. Um, we thought you was a toad. <laughs> it's, oh man, I love it. Clooney. It's just a fantastic movie. I watch it at least once a year. Yeah. Um, unbroken. Phen- Have you seen unbroken? Yes. It is the true story of, I just went blank on his name from world war two. Amazing movie. They did true grit. Mm-hmm. Let's see. What else have they done? They did bad Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Fargo, Fargo, Burn After Reading, yeah, uh, Tom Hanks in the uh, the Lady Killers, yeah, they've got some good movies, man. Ballad of Buster Scruggs, uh, Bridge of Spies is also very good. Oh, so they worked with Spielberg. Yeah. Wait, wait, Th- these aren't saying that they directed them though. Oh, okay, hang on. It usually gives me the movies that they directed. Hmm. Maybe they just produced. Did they produce that? I know they directed Oh Brother Why Art Thou, and I know they directed um um um. <laughs> That's a good movie. <laughs> As I'm sitting here, though, I'm thinking: Is that worthy of being top eight? Really, you're you're gonna hedge now. I'm I'm starting to wonder. I mean, you got him at four, oh, the Big Lebowski. So there's 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 a uh, there's room. Nobody, I'm doing something that nobody else is doing though. I think the Cohen brothers they are in ranker. They're, Joel Cohen comes in 14th on IMDb. Cohen That's brothers are number Oscars. eight on ranker together. Okay, then maybe I'm not that that far off. Then I, I feel good. Let's let's keep them at number four. Now the movie. This is this is where it's going to get tricky. To me, I know what my favorite movie is. It's Oh Brother Where Art Thou. That, I think that's got to be the one, man. No Country for Old Men. <sighs> You're right. Was <laughs> it's also for, it's between those two. It's got to be right, unless you add a third one that I that I agree with. <laughs> um. I mean, okay, let's let's look at the argument for, for a couple of them. Okay. Oh, Brother, Where Art Thou is so unique. It is not... It, would you, is it a comedy? Yeah, it's funny, but it's not a straight-up comedy. No. Um, is it dramatic? It's got some dramatic moments, but it's not a drama. And to me, it feels very Forrest Gumpish. I was just about to say that. You've got comedy, Absolutely. love. Yeah. You've you got the romance. You've got the draw. You've got it all. You've got it all. It's very unique. It's set in a very unique time period. The, even the the look and feel of it is very yeah. is very different. It's got some music in there. Um, the storyline's great. From start to finish, it's a movie that I never feel like I check out of. Every time I see... Back when I would see things on tv just randomly uh i would always stop, stop and watch it yeah, yeah. If, it, if ever i come a scroll across to it and i'm trying to find a movie i'm watching it um no country for old men you know it is oh man it's so good that is uh who's uh, what, <laughs> i'm, I'm blanking uh, i'm blanking oh my gosh it's on the tip of my tongue oh he's the guy i always say is uh, it's tommy lee jones and uh, uh, Javier Javier Bardem. Bardem. Yeah. 
he I always say he's the uh, the Latino uh, Brad Pitt, <laughs> Josh Brolin, Woody Harrelson. Oh my gosh, that is such a great cast. It is gritty. It is. It's very unique. Also, it's very. Oh man, now now I don't know. Now I don't know. <laughs> the more I'm thinking about No Country for Old Men, I don't know. It may be more. Um, I don't know that it required more direction, but. I don't know, man. That's that's. I don't think you can go wrong with either of those. I think it's dealer's choice, man. Hang on, it won best picture of the year. Yeah. It. I don't know. It's hard. I. I wouldn't be mad with either of them. <laughs> oh. How do we decide? What that? do you guys think? Oh. Which Which one is the better Coen Brothers movie? Is it Oh Brother Where Art Thou? Or is it No Country for Old Men? Both of them have their merits. Both of them are fantastic. I can't decide which one. Honestly, I can't. Let's see. They're both very, they go in different directions to the same location, (laughs) which is just fantastic top 20 movies. Which one would you choose? I don't know. I just told you. I don't know. I don't know which one I would pick. Let's each say a movie on the count of three. Okay. And see if we say the same Uh, one. Okay. Three two one no, no country, country for, for old men, men. okay <laughs> and the only reason why is i don't know <laughs> I, I don't know either i don't know there's just i don't know it's just so... i think i i'm i'm giving it a little weight for winning best picture of the year yeah it was before you know i feel like the academy kind of got stupid with some of their picks and that was back when they were actually you know right. naming good movies yeah still yeah um it's so good, man. That, the, it's not the movie though. If it's on, I'm not just going to stop and watch no, it. No, because because I'm not watching dedicate, it every year. I'm dedicate time to it. You know, you oh gotta, brother, where art thou? You can just sort of pick up anywhere and enjoy the film. You, you got to be in the mood for No Country for Old Men. Um, I actually have that book too. After the movie came out, <laughs> but you know, he uses that uh, that horse tranquilizer or whatever that that modified. You know, you just kind of yes. It up to, that's just yeah. That took some thinking, man, to make that happen. So, Tommy Lee Jones was great in that, also. Like just, just the manhunt. It's just, yeah. it was such a good movie. I'm not mad at that at all. Okay, I, I think it deserves. I think they, yeah, I think they deserve to be on here, right now. <laughs> Speaking of brothers, I don't think we can put them on this list, but we got to mention the Russo brothers. They. I don't know. I don't know what they did before uh, the MCU. <laughs> um, I think a, a part maybe they did some things. I don't know. I would have to look that up. But I know together, you're talking like Avengers: Infinity War and Endgame. Ever heard of it? <laughs> so when I pull them up, it's not pulling that up. It's pulling up Extraction, Extraction Two. It's only pulling up these six films. I've got six films on IMDb also, and it is those two Avengers movies. The Gray Man. Captain America Civil War, Captain America Winter Soldier, You Me Dupree, and Welcome to Collinwood. See, why why are those not showing up over here? I'm not sure. I know they did the the Avengers movies. Yes. So now is that both Russo brothers combined or because they've done individual things as well? Um I know. I think. I feel like Anthony may have done more. They are best known for directing four films in the MCU. It, and don't forget, Endgame was the highest grossing film of all time there for a while. That's true. Um, Anthony Russo. I'm going to pull him up. I don't know if you want to get the other Russo. But Anthony, um, of course. He's got a he's got a few Oscars. He did everything all everything everywhere all at once as well. Um, I don't think I've seen that one. That came out in 2022, and I think it won Best Picture, if I'm not mistaken. He did The Gray Man, uh, which was pretty good. It was on Netflix, I think. Um, I have not seen it. Ryan Gosling or Jake Gyllenhaal. I get them too confused, <laughs> uh, but it was pretty good. It was it was good. Uh, what else did he do? Anything? He's directed some TV shows. That's about it. So, I mean, they they are really got their... It feels like... 
isn't that weird? They get their their big break during some Marvel movies. <laughs> he also directed that TV show Community. Really? Joseph Russo. He did Up All Night. So like I said, I, I don't think I don't think I'm not prepared to put them you, me, and in the top eight, but I think it's worth mentioning. They've they've done some good things. Yeah. Honorable mention. Honorable mention for sure. Okay, I'm going to say a name. Okay. And if you hit the button, that's fine with me. Okay. George Lucas. I think you have to, right? You got to put the man. When I look at directed by, I'm only seeing six. Really? But those six, <laughs> it started with American Graffiti, which is iconic. I think Ron Howard was in that one, if I'm remembering was right. It? American Graffiti. Yeah, I think so. Um, but what we really know him for, yes, is the Star Wars franchise. Mm-hmm. He directed A New Hope in 1977. He did not direct the other two films in the original trilogy. Did he not? So Empire and Return. Who did? I don't don't have that information at the moment. He then directed the prequels, all three of them. Phantom Fennis. Okay. um, Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. The prequels do get a lot of hate. It's true. In fact, you absolutely hate which one is it jar jar just jar jar period <laughs> i can't remember if it's uh the phantom menace whichever but, one has a lot to do with like the senate and all that yeah. kind of stuff phantom I, menace gets a lot of hate from people as being as being really bad attack of the clones i think is the one with jar maybe Beats. i'm gonna I'm, i may pull my <laughs> my button back because if he's only if we're talking about a director obviously he's a great producer and visionary filmmaker yes. When it comes to a director, I don't know that that body of work. This would explain why, just as we were starting, you saw on Ranker George Lucas all the way down at 47. And our initial reaction was, whoa, what's going on here? But now that I see this, I can kind of understand it. Yeah. I don't know that that is worthy. Let's see, if I take writer and producer, I just look at director. Yeah, I pulled up on IMDb and and that list checks out with a with with a couple extra little uh, indie films and smaller projects. I know when he did American Graffiti, that gave him the money yes to do Star Wars because he had this vision for Star Wars. He was a a student filmmaker, I believe, and so he had this kind of vision for for Star Wars and and kind of had to 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 kind of fight and claw his way up through the ranks to get there, and so. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take back my button. Like if we were doing producers, absolutely. He's done some amazing. Like he. He just. He did Dial of Destiny. Yeah, the indie film. Um. Let's see. Does the Indiana Jones franchise belong to Lucas Films? Yes. I mean, so, I mean as far as a guy who turned his work into being some major franchises. George Lucas is at the top. I mean, he absolutely is. <laughs> and franchises is on our list. At some point, I, I definitely want us to talk about the best movie franchises of all time. Uh, but yeah, I, I think as a as a straight up director, I'm gonna have to pull the button. Okay. I don't know that we've ever had ever pulled a button had before. Re- had to retract it. Maybe we have. I don't know. It's like that night in. 2000 when CNN said that Al Gore won the presidency <laughs> and then had to retract it. We've, we've had that moment. Uh-oh. I am going to hit the button here, though. Okay. Robert Zemeckis. Robert now, Zemeckis. it's a name you may not, if, you, if you're not into this kind of stuff, you may not immediately recognize the name, but Robert Zemeckis has probably directed some of the uh, some of your favorite movies of all times. Let me list a few of them all for you, if you don't mind. A little movie called Back to the Future. Ever heard of it? Oh. Um, Back to the Future, uh, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, another little film in 1988 called Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yep. 
Um, he also did this little one called um, Forrest Gump. Oh. Um, he also oh, 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 oh. did a little film called Castaway. Oh, he likes Tom Hanks. The Polar Express. He likes Tom Hanks. A Christmas Carol. He likes Jim Carrey. <laughs> Uh, he also did the movie Flight with Denzel Washington. Um, he did uh, Allied Pinocchio, Tom Hanks. Um, so he has done wow. some incredible movies. Uh, Beowulf. Um, he's also Contact. Um, so he also I know he's produced some movies like Home Alone uh, and stuff like that too. So okay. I think he's worthy of of this bracket for right now. I'm going to put him at number four. Whoa, whoa, whoa. For now. Whoa, for now. You just named those movies and said, ah, it sounds like he's uh, worthy of last place. Okay, three. That's better. I'm going to put him at three. Who's, did you already have number up. one? <laughs> no, I don't have a number one yet. And I don't, I don't know. You don't I, think he's worthy of a number one? He might be. I don't know if I want to. I don't know yet. Okay. I'm, I'm starting number three. I'm starting. I'm starting to do this strategy where I just put him in a place and then I'll rearrange later, <laughs> depending on the matchup. Our matchups have been so <laughs> so hard the first round. Um. So. I mean, I'm tempted. Nolan's at two for me right now. It's hard to move Nolan down from two. I think. I think two is a great spot for Christopher Nolan. Yep. I'm going to put Zemeckis at three. He's he's definitely not a four, and that matchup at number four would yeah, not be fair. that's a hard matchup. That would not be fair. But I don't know which move. I think I want to put Back to the Future. No, I'm going to put oh, Castaway. I was going to say, is I think Castaway is what goes there. Because that required a lot of... I mean, it required a lot from Tom Hanks also, but at a certain... I mean, as, a, as direction goes, to... Be, I think it would be. I, I'm not an actor. I'm not a director. We don't know what we're talking about. We don't know from a technical side what we're talking about. But I can imagine trying to pull some stuff out of Tom Hanks when it's just him. That movie focuses really so much on just one individual. It, yeah. I mean, you got to carry the movie. So you've really got to pull some stuff out of him. So it's it, Castaway is is Back to the Future. Maybe his more famous. Oh, he movie, did the walk. The walk. I don't know the walk. The dude in was it in the seventies, eighties, put the high wire between the twin towers. Oh yeah, and walked it. Okay, I do I, remember that. I, 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 yeah. Okay, you've got a number two left. I've still got two spots left. I've only got one spot left. Yeah, and it's my number two spot. It is your number two spot. Hmm. I feel like I'm running out of people. There's a few here we haven't mentioned yet. So here's one. I'm going to say Woody Allen. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you that as I look through his list of movies, I don't think I've ever seen one of them. <laughs> Whoa. Are you serious? I don't recognize <laughs> any of these. He is known for a very specific style. These look like a lot of sort of maybe romance. Yeah. He, he is. It's a, it's a, he does a lot of comedy. Um, very quirky is what uh, is a great word to describe. I do you know any of these movies? Start listing them. Uh, you want me to go old to new? Sure. Take the money and run. Oh yeah, never heard of it. Sleeper. I don't know sleeper. Annie Hall. Annie Hall's classic. Never heard of it. Interiors. He's known a lot for breaking the fourth wall as well. Manhattan. The Purple Rose of Cairo, Hannah and Her Sister, September, Another Woman, Crimes and Misdemeanors. I think I have heard of Crimes and Misdemeanors. He, uh, now, as far as direction goes, I don't. there's a lot of those that I don't know that he directed. These are all under the directed by. See, on IMDb, I only see 11, and none of those have, have hit it yet under direction. You did say Mel Brooks, right? No. no, you said Woody Allen. Woody I'm Allen. Thinking, I'm thinking Mel Brooks, which is also tempting to put on here. I don't think it'll get past you, though. Uh, let's see. I had Mel Brooks pulled up a minute ago. So I know Woody Allen gets talked about a lot. 
I just I haven't seen those films. Yeah. Produced by Mel Brooks, directed by Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks, you have some some really iconic one. The producers. Never seen it. Blazing Saddles. Haven't seen it. Oh my gosh. Young Frankenstein. Haven't seen it. Oh my gosh. Spaceballs. Never seen it. Oh, help me, Rhonda. Robin Hood, Men and Tides. Never, never seen, seen it. it. You need to watch some I, of these <laughs> these movies. Um, again, I'm not going to add him to this list. Sorry, internet, but it's not going to get past. It, it, it's my fault. It's not going to get past Aaron here. I, are those worthy of watching? I don't know that I've... Yes. I will tell you this. If if I was putting one up, it would be either Robin Hood, Men in Tights, or Sp Blazing Saddles. Mel Brooks is known for his... Um, he's the one who breaks the fourth wall a lot. He is... Um, have you seen Airplane? No. Okay. I'm trying to figure out a movie that would be close to what... Uh, you, you said you've seen uh, The Princess Bride. Yes. The, it has some of those kind of feels. Okay. But, but much, uh, I would say Mel Brooks movies lean a little bit more satirical, a little bit more uh, just kind of making making the punchlines hit a little harder. Um, Blazing Saddles was... That would probably be the one that I would put up for Mel Brooks. It was groundbreaking. Had an African American person in it, which was in 1974 in a western was not something you did a okay. lot. And so, uh, just kind of had him the starring role. He uh, he was a new sheriff in town, and so you know when they first reveal that this this <laughs> this black guy is the sheriff, he he does a great job of of talking about the stereotypes and and trying to apply that, and he he made it to where. Um, you know, he touched on racism, but did it in a way that everyone enjoyed it. Okay. And that's hard to do. <laughs> right. Um, let me see here. Do you have somebody else in mind? Somebody else to bring up? How about Ron Howard? Okay. That's one for sure that I wanted to touch on. And I, I am... I, I I guess I need to relook at some of their uh their their directing. Okay. Because I know they've done a lot of stuff, but I want to make sure we we have them in the right category. He directed first in 1977. He started with Grand Theft Auto. I've heard of that. That's a video game. <laughs> it's probably where the video <laughs> game came from. He did Willow. I've heard of that. Okay. I've not seen either of those. I've not seen that. But then we get to Apollo 13. That alone is worth it to me. He did the original How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Yes. Well, I I guess not the the, the movie. The movie. Uh, Ed TV. I know you Ed probably haven't TV. seen that. I don't that, even see it there. That was good. Right by the Grinch. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. That was good. A Beautiful Mind. A fantastic film. S Cinderella Man. Yeah, Cinderella Man was amazing as well. And then he liked to work with Tom Hanks. Yeah. Da Vinci Code. Uh, Angels and Demons. Inferno. Did he do another one with Tom Hanks? He did The Dilemma with um, Vince Vaughn. Is that Kevin James? And Kevin James, yeah. The he, Heart of the Sea with uh, Chris Hemsworth. Have not seen it. Very good. He did Solo. I think that's the, the story of Moby Dick. Now, I've heard of Hillbilly Elegy. I have not heard of that. You've one. not heard of that? Okay, I thought you were the one who had told me about it. No, it wasn't me. Um, what so, is, what is what? The Missing? Uh, That's Tommy Lee Jones right there, it looks like. Missing is very good. Rush is also very good. Um, Cinderella Man. Yep. Very good. There's Tom Cruise, far and away. Yeah, I think he's. I got him. I got him at number four. Yeah, that that's right. Okay, so and when the movie, I'm, I'm, I think it's between Cinderella Man, A Beautiful Mind, it's Apollo thirteen or Apollo thirteen. It's those three, and I can't decide which one I want to put there. Um, you know, a beautiful. I mean, I guess both of those are Russell Crowe. Let's eliminate one of those. Um, Where did he go? Just my my personal taste. I prefer Cinderella Man. 
But Beautiful Mind is really, really good as well. It is. I think I, I would have to, I, I think for direction, I would lean toward A Beautiful Mind over Cinderella Man. I agree. So it's between A Beautiful Mind and Apollo 13. And I'm just trying to think. Apollo 13 is the better movie, but from a director standpoint, I'm not I, sure. I think it's that too. I think it is as well. I just, I'm trying not to be that guy who just defaults to his favorite, you know, but I'm going to. Apollo 13. That's one of those that if it's on, you stop and watch it. Um, I need to watch it again. I haven't watched it in a while. I think last time I tried to look for it, it wasn't available on streaming anywhere. You had to buy it, which was probably not a hard thing for me to do, is to buy it. Um, let me mention a couple others real quick. Um, he is not a number one for me. It's tempting. I'm going to have to rearrange my list a little bit, but we got to talk about James Cameron. Oh, of course we do. Uh, James Cameron, Jim Cameron, known for Titanic, um, Terminator, um, the Alien movies, Avatar. The dude's probably got more money. <laughs> he probably rivals some of these tech giants because his movies have just hit. Like he, I mean, Titanic held the record for the most, for the highest grossing movie of all time. And then um, the Avatar held the record for the highest grossing movie of all time. You taking him? I'm going to take James Cameron. You got two, a spot two left. Is yeah. that where you want him? Um, no. Okay. I want. You've got Spielberg one. I want to move Hitchcock to two, and I want to move James Cameron to three. Okay. I think that's a good call. Who did I have four? Coen Brothers. I want to move Coen Brothers to three and James Cameron to four. Yeah, I would. I think that's good too. Okay, James Cameron. Uh, what movie are you going to put there? This is where it's tough. Avatar was such a groundbreaking film for its time. But was it groundbreaking because of the 3D and the and the visuals? Yes. yes. Was it did it have anything to do with his direction? <laughs> that got to be difficult to direct, right? <laughs> I mean, I guess so with I, green screens and everything. It wasn't really done but, at that point. Let's see. Titanic won Best Picture of the Year, didn't it? I believe so. I could be wrong, but I believe so. Let me uh, get back to my Best Picture of the Year. Whoop. I saw Titanic for the first time just a couple years ago. Did you really? Yeah. I always thought, what was the point of watching it? I mean, I know the story. I think that's true. I, I just never felt compelled <laughs> To watch it, but the wife finally was like, "You've got to watch, yeah, Titanic." I gave it an eight out of ten. I mean, so I I it's, liked. Yeah, it. it's a fine movie. I, I liked mean, it. It's it's not m my cup of tea as far as like, oh, this is the movie I love. But Titanic won eleven Oscars, including Best Picture. It's loading. <laughs> yes, it won Best Picture. But Avatar, it, it, it won three Oscars. I don't think it won Best Picture. Though. I don't think it won Best Picture either. I'm, I'm, I know it probably won for visuals, probably cinematography. It was a nominee for Best Picture. I was going to say it may have been a nominee. But it was a winner in cinematography. It won Best Achievement in Visual Effects. It won Art Direction. Okay. Yeah, all those make sense for that. Titanic won. I think it's got to be Titanic. I think that's the, that's, that's the movie. Because, I mean, that really... I mean, for him as a person as well, like, he's kind of devoted... A chunk of his life. I mean, he's he's gone back and done uh, Nat Geo or whatever yeah. documentaries on returning to the Titanic. I mean, and he went exploring to the, the Titanic. You know, he's invested in the Titanic. I think it's Titanic. Okay. 
Titanic it is. Um, I want to mention, you got more to say about James Cameron? Nope. Okay. Congratulations on your life. <laughs> Um, somebody I don't think is going to make our list here, but I got to mention, uh, Stanley Kubrick, Kubrick. Um, he is classic. Um, he did fear and desire, uh, the killing paths of glory, Spartacus, Dr. Strangelove, um, 2001, a space odyssey, clockwork orange, the shining full never metal jacket, eyes wide shut. Um, uh, I cannot believe you've never a space seen. odyssey. 2001 a space odyssey is the only movie of his i believe that i have seen really and it was weird <laughs> it is he is very different he he takes different approach uh some of these directors they they are just not a sponsor some of these <laughs> some of these directors uh, they are they're, they're just their style is just different it's just quirky it's just it's very specific the shining is still one of my favorite horror or scary movies of all time it is fantastic uh, I'm not going to put him on this list, but we got to mention him. I he mean, won an Oscar. Yeah, he's. I think he's. Does he just win one? That's what it says. Wow, he's been nominated 13 times. Um, I've got one spot left. It's my number one. I th I'm going to end up moving some yeah, things have to around. Move things around. Um, Quentin Tarantino. Um, I, he's not my cup of tea either. Um, he's got like Django Unchained. There's just those kinds of movies. That's just Kill Bill. That's just not my, not my jam. Um, Clint Eastwood. Oh, I got to mention Clint Eastwood here. And let me pull him up. Um, because he, you know, he was an actor forever. Um, he did a lot of uh, all the westerns and stuff like that. But he has really stepped into becoming a director in his latter. That's like almost like his second career has been an actor or a director. Um, I don't know. I'm sure. I know he's one. He has directed. Wow. 46 films. Yeah. Starting in 1971. High Plains Drifter. Outlaw Josie Wells. Bronco Billy, Sudden Impact, I did Heartbreak not Ridge. Realize he directed Dirty Harry. Yeah, The Rookie, Bridges of Madison County, Absolute Power, Space Cowboys, mm -hmm. Mystic River, Man, this has Million Dollar Baby. This hasn't been a second career then for him. He's been doing this the whole time. I Grand didn't Torino, it. Invictus, Space Cowboys. <laughs> Space Cowboys is a great movie. American Sniper. Yeah. Sully, Flag of Our Fathers, Letters from Iwo Jima, The Mule. Cry Macho. He's got to be on the list. He does. He's got to be on the list. But see, to me right now, it's him or Scorsese. Scorsese and The Departed or I, Eastwood. This, this flies against everything that a lot of cinephiles would say okay but i would absolutely take clint eastwood over scorsese i mean with the body of work it's Just hard to argue on what i enjoy it's eastwood mm. it's hard when i pin the top movies from each it's hard because i love shutter island i love the departed the aviator's great but man million dollar baby american sniper uh j edgar was good too it was invictus gran torino yes um you mystic know mystic river was great space, space cowboys, cowboys. <laughs> you uh, know that that's the one I, you know in your heart i don't know that clint eastwood is better clint eastwood oh man this this feels like a play-in game <laughs> this is this is a play-in round i'm gonna go ahead and move some things around let me ask you okay is 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 there any chance that you would like to have James Cameron? No. Would you take James Cameron over? So you can have Eastwood? Over Eastwood. No. I don't think so. So you think that Eastwood and Scorsese are above Cameron? You know... <laughs> 
I'm going. I'm going for the second time today. Whoa! <laughs> I am going to retroactively take my button back. I'm kicking James Cameron. You're to the kicking sidewalk. Cameron out. He's gone. Okay, who you? He's gone. You're While stealing you, Eastwood. No, oh. I'm letting you work that out. But I am taking Frank Capra. Okay. I was just about to say we have not mentioned Frank Capra yet. Frank Capra. Most people probably today know him from It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. But he also did some other incredible films back in that time, in that era, that I absolutely love with Cary Grant, Arsenic, and Old Lace. He did Meet John Doe with um, Gary Cooper. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. The original Mr. Deeds. It Happened One Night. Uh, what am I missing here? I'm looking for the ones that I know. Uh, here Comes the Groom. State of the Union with Spencer, uh, Spencer uh, Tracy and Catherine Hepburn. He was an amazing director in the 30s and 40s. And let's see, did he win? Did I... Did I Cut my list off. No, here we go. I know I saw him. Clint Eastwood. You just mull on this for a second. <laughs> he has four Oscars. I just ran across him. Here's where I'm at with Clint Eastwood right now. I don't know what movie I would put there. I know which one I would put, but you have not seen it. What? Million Dollar Baby. Oh, I mean, I know it's a great movie. I think it would be that. Maybe Gran Torino... Um, but I think it would be Million Dollar Baby. And you haven't seen it, so it's it, that's that's hard for me. I know you've seen The Departed. I know, but I, but I know that Million Dollar Baby is a is a very well known movie. Okay. I'm taking Eastwood then. And I'm going to put it, put Million Dollar Baby there. Just to finish what I was going to say on Frank Capra, he has seven Oscar wins. Best director, 1934, 35, 37, 39, 1940, and 1947. Finishing with It's a Wonderful Life. That was his last one? That he won an Oscar for. Oh, okay. That he won an Oscar for. Yeah, so. I mean, that's what I know him from. Um, I don't know that I've seen any of the other ones. I would say that if you're now moving into this adult stage of life <laughs> where you can go back and watch older movies yeah. and try to appreciate them, I would say Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, Meet John I Doe. I have seen Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Um, Arsenic and Old Lace. Those all would absolutely be must-watch. State of the Union. I would say you should watch all of those. I've seen a lot of State of the Union. <laughs> Okay, we have our bracket rounded out. I, I moved some things around. I, I went ahead and moved Mullen, Nolan up to one. Zemeckis uh -oh. at number two. Um, Eastwood at three. Ron Howard at four. So, I'm tempted to swap Nolan and, and Zemeckis, but I'm not. Uh, what movie are you putting for, for Capra? It's a Wonderful Life. Okay. It has left an indelible mark yeah. on history. It defines the Christmas season. That is true. I still got Clint Eastwood on the screen. Uh, yeah. Get out of there, Clint. Get out of there. I don't think that there is a single director on that list that has impacted the nation through a film the way that Frank Capra has with that movie. It's not a bad opinion. I think that's a very decent take. Good job. You had a decent take today. <laughs> All right, are we ready to bracket now that we have it? Yep. Okay. Anybody we left out? I don't oh, know. I'm sure. I'm I'm sure there is, but I couldn't tell you who they are. Who they are? I don't oh, care oh, about oh. them. Yeah, there are two. Real quick, I wrote them down earlier, so I wouldn't forget. M. Not Shyamalan. Sixth, oh. Sixth Sense. He did a lot of these other great. He did a lot of suspenseful movies. He is really slacked off though. Recency bias. His last unbreakable. Ha Science. You know, his last three, four, five movies have just not been great. But he did a lot of great movies. Um, 
especially early on. I, I You could make an argument for him. I didn't see him on any of these lists, though. I uh, didn't either. Jordan Peele also is an up and coming. I think if we did this move, if we did this bracket in another 10 years, um, history is going to remember Jordan Peele very well. He's only done a few right now, but they've all been bangers in the horror, uh, horror side of things. Suspenseful to get out us. Nope. Um, he is a very, I've never heard of any of those. Have you not? No. Wow. Um, 10 years from now, he would be one that I think we would all hmm. say, Hey, He's he's great in those things. So. Who do you have at number four? Ron Howard. And you would rather take him over M. Night Shyamalan? Really? What do you have of... You have, we have Apollo 13 with, with Howard, right? Yeah. Well, mm. It's tough. I don't know. I think there's some right here that are... I mean, Sixth Sense was just a groundbreaking movie. That's true. And then the Unbreakable Split Glass Trilogy. Also, also really good. Signs Village, Lady in the Water. You know, I, if it were me, I'd be tempted to take Ron Howard out and put this guy in over him. It is tempting. Now that, you're, now that you say those things out loud, you're convincing me today. I mean, we're 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 collaborating. We're we're working we together to try to to try to get we, the we, best. We want the the best eight. Yeah. All right, I'm doing it. Okay. All right. I think that everybody listening is cheering right now. They're like, <laughs> "Yes, yes, you've done it." Sixth Sense, though, that's the movie. Yeah, hands down, it's the movie. All right, let's bracket this thing. If you want to be the best. You have to beat the rest. This is the Best Things Bracket. Okay, we have eight directors and their best movies, according to us. We have to figure out which one can rule them all. And The Dark Knight is not on this list. <laughs> You're welcome, <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> First up, though, Steven Spielberg... With Saving Private Ryan versus M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense. Three, two, one, Spielberg. Spielberg. Next up, we have Alfred Hitchcock with Psycho versus Clint Eastwood's Million Dollar Baby. Three, two, one, Hitchcock. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, too. I was preparing my case for why I was going to say Hitchcock. Wow. Oh, it's got to be Hitchcock. I mean, I was, you know, I was debating if Eastwood was there even in it. So um, Christopher Nolan's with The Prestige versus Frank Capra. It's a wonderful life. Um. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> this is why I didn't want to have Nolan here at number one. Three, two, one. Capra. Christopher Nolan. I hate to do that, too. But the more that I th th that I realized how impactful It's a Wonderful Life was, it was like, I, I can't believe I almost left him off of the board. And I, man, I hate that. I hate this matchup a lot. Okay. Is, I mean, do we need to vote or you're like, you know what? It was, it's a wonderful life and you just want to change it. What is the case for Nolan? Cause I'd love to keep Christopher Nolan in this. I don't, I'm just asking I how, I, how uh, impactful I don't know. Him and that movie is compared to Frank Capra and It's a Wonderful Life. It's our job so hard. It's a it's a hard thing to figure out. We have to decide forever which one is the better one. I don't know. I'm, I'm in the same position. I, I want to be swayed either way. The only reason I choose Nolan is because, I mean, to me, The Prestige is a better movie than It's a Wonderful Life. But It's a Wonderful Ooh. Life is way more iconic of a movie. It has stood the test of time. 
I am going to... Uh, I am going to switch my vote for one round. For one round? <laughs> I think Capper gets one more round. I don't know that that's going to make it to the final. Right. But I'm going to give him the one more round to go Frank Capra. Okay. I don't feel good about it, but I'm doing it. Last matchup of the first round, Zemeckis with Castaway versus the Coen brothers. No country for old men. This is really hard, too. Three, two, one, Zemeckis. Zemeckis. That's really close. I wish the matchup was Hitchcock and Capra versus each other. Like two old school guys versus your Spielberg and Zemeckis. Yeah. Ooh, that would have been a hard matchup too, though. Spielberg versus Zemeckis it, it, in the first round. I would have... Man, okay, so if we were... if We were we're going to suspend belief for just a second. If we were to re redo these based on genres... I mean, you would go Spielberg versus Zemeckis, Hitchcock versus Capra, Coen Brothers versus Shyamalan, and Nolan versus Eastwood. Like, those those genres kind of match up pretty close. And I don't know what... This would be a very different bracket. It'd be a very different bracket. But that's not how it works. <laughs> it's, it's not. So... We digress anyway. I don't think I don't think you can go wrong with it. if any one of these the, was labeled the, the best, I wouldn't be mad. This is exactly in less, you know, in less than a month what a, a boardroom of committee members are going to have to do in college basketball. They're going <laughs> to sit there and say how do these matchups just work? Debate, what, just you, duke it out. I mean, you just and eventually you have to decide and you put it down on the bracket and it could come out a thousand different ways. I mean, if we were sitting here right now, the four that are the remaining, Spielberg, Hitchcock, Capra, and Zemeckis, is there one that got knocked out that should replace one that advanced? I guess that's the big question. Is there a travesty that we have left out of the final four? I mean, I don't think so. Christopher Nolan's the one that I would that I would want to say sh should advance. But who would he take? Wh whose spot does he take? You know, I, that that I don't with know. With the prestige, because that's the movie we with the prestige. To him. Yes. So I don't know. Sure. I don't know. It's hard. I guess we keep going forward. We keep going. We um, just keep trudging along. Spielberg this path. versus Hitchcock. <laughs> we just flip coins at this point. <laughs> yep. Let them fight. Three. Two, one, Spielberg. Spielberg. I don't feel good about it. <laughs> I feel better about that one than I do Nolan versus Capra. Capra versus Zemeckis, three. Now, hang on a second. Let's see. I, I just need to think. <laughs> well, but I, I, I can't think of the whole body of work, though, right? No, no. We're limited to the movie we have selected. Okay. Three, two, one, Zemeckis. Zemeckis. And then we have Spielberg versus Zemeckis. Spielberg has the name. Everyone knows who Steven Spielberg is. Yes. People do not know who Robert Zemeckis is, but they know the movies that he has done. Three, two, one, Spielberg. Spielberg. That's it. Congratulations to Steven Spielberg, the best director of all time. And I'm going to be honest with you. After all of that, after the entire bracket, I feel good about who wins. Yeah. His, I mean, we weren't looking at his body of work. We were just looking at mostly Saving Private Ryan for the sake of this bracket. But let's be honest. Tell me the rest of his body of work didn't influence you moving well, this yeah, forward. Yeah, it did. It because did, no doubt. He has such a massive body of work. And I don't think many people can argue the fact that he could be, is arguably the best director of all time. So I'm not mad at I it. I mean, is that is that what we're saying? That's what we're saying. He's the best director of all time. Yeah. yeah. That's what we just got done doing. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm confident we got the right person. How else would you word that? <laughs> I don't know.
Okay. I'm happy with it. Steven Spielberg, congratulations. You are you are the best thing. Okay, but we do have a decision that we need to make, and I'm going to make sure I know which one I want to do, and it's that one. It may be the best thing today, but is it the best thing of all time? It's time for the best thing battle. We have not had a a thing that has won two weeks in a row since maybe last year. <laughs> That's we, probably a, a good bet. We keep switching them out. Right now, it's Steven Spielberg versus cooking and baking on a snow day. <laughs> Wonder what's going to win this. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. Spielberg. Spielberg. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Congratulations, Steven Spielberg Burger Burger. <laughs> I'm gonna guess it was that thing. Have you ever done that that headphone or that game where you put your headphones on and it and it delays your voice? Yeah, <laughs> and you can't talk right. <laughs> Well, I thought we were both going to say Steven Spielberg, and then you just said Spielberg, and I was <laughs> then I was going to try to change it to Spielberg, and it just whatever. Everybody knew what it was. We know you know who we're talking about. <laughs> He's probably not going to come on the podcast now. Right. Like, what? Well, you guys didn't even get my name right. No, I'm not coming on there. Yeah, watch it. We we make it big in a couple of years, and we get all these. We we try to invite him on, and he goes, "I remember. I listened. Uh, yeah, I paid we, attention. We, we saw that. No." Oh my gosh. Okay, Aaron, you got anything else? Uh no. Nope. 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 I mean, I, I've I've put some movies back in the old memory bank here that I want to go watch. Yeah. And see if maybe there were some names that I should I should have switched out. Yeah. I, I need I I need to go rewatch Apollo thirteen. That's I, I, I forget about that movie sometimes. I need to go back and forget watch about that. Apollo thirteen. It's just not. It's not top of mind. I don't think it's available for streaming anywhere. So I don't. Oh, I need to go watch it. Okay. okay. Well, that'll do it then for the best things. I am Craig. I'm Aaron, and we'll talk at you next time. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Best Things Podcast. If you liked today's episode, subscribe and leave us a review wherever you're listening now. And remember. Connect with us on the socials at Best Things Pod, and you may hear your take on an upcoming episode. <laughs>